Thank you for joining in today for this episode of The Advocate, a production of the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy that informs physicians and patients on emerging healthcare topics impacting GI. ASG represents over 14,000 gastroenterologists worldwide and is the leading voice for GI endoscopy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of ASG The Advocate. I'm your host, immediate ASG past president, Dr. Klaus Mergener. And today is episode two, so to speak, of us discussing some critically important issues related to women in endoscopy. And for this episode, it's my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Ferga Gleason. Ferga, welcome. Hello, good evening, Klaus. It's great to be with you. It's nice to see you. Uh, for those of you who don't know Dr. Gleason, uh, she is a professor of medicine and the chair of marketing and communications for the division of gastroenterology and hepatology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Uh, importantly for our topic today, Dr. Gleason is the chair of the ASG member engagement committee and the chair of the ASGE Special Interest Group, or SIG as we call them, on women in endoscopy. Uh, so Ferga, let's get right to it and tell us a little bit about what you've planned for the ASGE Women in Endoscopy SIG for the coming year. So Klaus, over the next 12 months, what we're hoping to do is to have a series of Zoom uh, happy hour sessions. So topics that we hope to cover will include artificial intelligence, uh, ergonomics, which are very important to uh, people of different statures and sizes and hand sizes, etc. Uh, also importantly, to learn about tips and tricks to review papers, manuscripts and videos. Uh, we would like to have a session with all of the leading ladies who've been part of the governing board, both past and present. And that will be useful from a professional development perspective. And then from a practice building perspective, we would like to have a session with all of the women who have been involved in setting up bariatric endoscopy programs. Fantastic. And all critically important topics, uh, really. Going forward, then, what's your vision sort of for the intermediate and long term future for this SIG? So where we stand at the moment is that we have over 120 members of the SIG. So what we'd really love to do would be to get bigger and better. And we think that we can do that in partnership with the LEAD program. And that's being run this year with uh, Jennifer Maranke and Brintha Envested. And that we would also work with the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee that will be run by Jennifer Christie. So the goal really would be not necessarily over the next 12 months, it may take a little bit longer than that, but to try to convert this SIG to an ASGE committee, a de designated one, and that we would have a permanent presence at DDW. Because we feel that this as a committee could really be the go-to spot for women, whether they're interested in their clinical care aspects of practice, research, education, practice management, mentoring, um, lots of different things. We'd love to be the, the go-to spot. And I couldn't agree more. And making that conversion from a special interest group to a committee, what it does with an ASGE is it really brings this group into the fray and it allows us um, to better plan ahead and allocate funds. For the committee. So hopefully we'll be able to accomplish that. Well, let's uh, switch gears just slightly and have you tell our viewers a little bit about the current status of ASG membership and specifically, again, as it relates to uh, women in our specialty. So we have uh, more than 14,000 members from over 100 countries and 19% of our members are women. So to put that into perspective uh, for people who might not be uh, US members, uh, US gastroenterologists are comprised of about 18% females. So I think actually we're doing pretty well 
on that level. And we can only go from strength to strength. Um, I think one of the other areas really to highlight with that committee is to make sure that our members are aware that we want to cover all generations, all interests, um, irrespective of whether you just have a minor interest in endoscopy or if you live, breathe, eat, dream endoscopy. And also in particular that we would like to reach out and to ensure that we incorporate people who work in private practice, the VA system, in addition to academic environments. So we think that if we can reach out to them and then the teams that they work with. So what many people may not be aware of is that the website for ASGE has a fountain of information for the people that we actually work with. So whether that's uh, nursing staff, techs, um, practice management, nurse practitioners, PAs, and also industry. So I think we'd like to get that message out that you know we're open for business for people to have a look at the website. Absolutely, and, and very important point. And I hope our viewers, some of them will um, get to our website and take a look as you say, uh, at uh, the many resources that we have currently posted and are continuing uh, to post there. Um, so in terms of then specific strategies for member engagement, and by the way, congratulations belatedly uh, to your appointment as chair of that critically important committee. Uh, I, I was very pleased to see that. Uh, what's your strategy for the committee over the next, say, 12 months in terms of how we reach out and engage members? So I think like all of these things, and obviously I'm new to the committee and I've inherited the role from uh, Pari Shah, who did a wonderful job. But I think we need to work out what I would term the state of the union. Uh, what is it that our members are looking for, our prospective members? So I think the best way to do that is to redo a census, which was initially done, I believe, in 2017. And if we could update that membership census um, to work out where the potential gaps are, and hopefully we could roll that out in early 2022. Mm -hmm. So while that is being created uh, and designed, We've also come up with another plan, and this actually, I also give a shout out to Pari Shah for this. Um, so it's a new program, which has been called Beyond the Scope. So beyond the endoscope. So it covers any topic uh, that will be of benefit to more senior fellows. So this is something that's close to your heart from an education perspective. So what we're trying to do is pair mentees with mentors. And this will be the inaugural program. It's going to be a two-year program. And I'm delighted to say that with Pari's hard work and that of the ASGE staff, that we actually have more than 60 pairings. So more than 60 fellows applied and more than 60 gastroenterologists applied. So I think that that's a good move forward. Another area to cover, I think, over the next 12 months is to work out the designation of the fellowship status for ASGE members. I think we've got a number of members who are really in good standing, who work hard and effectively in their communities, their hospitals, and they've got an awful lot to offer. So they may not be aware that they are actually eligible for such a designation. So we'd like to reach out to them to see if they're interested and then to try and facilitate that for them. And obviously in, in current day situations, we really need to embrace uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion committee. So we will work um, heavily with them. Um, so that's really, I think the future for the next 12 months, I think. Fantastic. I, I can't wait for many of these programs to unfold and see how they evolve under your leadership. So thank you to you and the committee for uh, advancing all of these very important issues. Uh, you've already alluded uh, to it briefly, and, and you've been active within ASGE, of course, for a long time, including in a number of leadership uh, positions, and now 
in this new role as committee chair of our membership committee. Tell us a little bit, uh, sort of in general terms, how you think about uh, future important topics for ASGE to be aware of and to tackle. So I think probably priority number one at the moment is what's the new normal in a post pandemic world. I think that that's an important thing for our, shall we say, US Canadian uh, members in addition to those in Mexico, because that's our, really our biggest group of people. But also to be cognizant that the world around us and our global members are actually going through a variety of different stages of the pandemic. Some are going through an uptick, others have vaccine access issues. So I think we really need to be um, present and responsive to them and to their needs. I think another area for the committee is that of health equity. We need to be able to support our members who are working with vulnerable populations. And I think one of the probably hot topics there is now with the new guidelines that are out that we should uh, be performing screening for colorectal cancer beginning at the age of 45. I think that behooves us to reach out to these people from an education perspective and to highlight the importance of that to them. I think other areas of interest that people are interested in can range from a practice management perspective. They're very interested in how can they optimize reimbursement, coding, billing. And then there are other people who are very interested if we could possibly design um, you know, device development programs. AI is another area, it's another hot topic. Um, it's probably been in our lives for much longer than we've been aware of, but it's certainly going to be staying with us. I think a fun topic is the concept of wearable technology. Uh, so we all have, you know, smartphones, smartwatches, maybe access to smart glasses. But I think at the recent DDW, we heard quite a lot about concepts to include smart toilets and smart capsules. So I think it's a, it's a fun area, but it's an area that people are inquiring about. And I think another area that perhaps is more serious topic um, that we probably haven't paid a lot of attention to, but I think we will need to do so moving forward. And that's a term called green endoscopy. So what's an interesting fact, I think, is it's estimated that US hospitals generate more than 4 billion tons of waste per year. So I think from a business administration perspective and from an industry perspective, they will be very interested as to how we could become more cost effective, obviously determine if we can reduce our, our footprint. But we work with so many aspects uh, that could be modified. And this then becomes the hot topic when we run into the arena of disposable and single use scopes. We've got duodenoscopes, bronchoscopes are just out. Who knows what else is around the corner? Fantastic. Uh, no, absolutely no shortage of uh, work to do, and it'll be fun to tackle uh, all of those topics. Thank you so much for that uh, list and for the, uh, for the information. Uh, Ferga, before we wrap uh, up this session, I wanted to give you an opportunity for just any final thoughts, any key takeaway messages you might have for our viewers. I think an important takeaway message is that the society has really done a magnificent job over the last 12 to 18 months um, as to how it has tackled uh, pandemic challenges, both working as a society individually and then working with other national GI societies to have a unified message. And I think that um, what often happens behind the scenes is sometimes a thankless job. So I think this gives me an opportunity to thank the staff who work for ASGE, um, the senior leadership. Um, they've been very agile and dynamic over the last 12 to 18 months. So I think we're in a good spot. Um, and I think obviously we can just only get better. I think there's, there's goodwill, so we can only but improve. 
very well said. And I, once again, couldn't agree more. Um, Fergal, thank you again so much for making time today and uh, for all of your thoughts, your advice, and your work on behalf of ASGE and its members and all the patients we serve. Thank you. Thanks very much. Enjoy chatting with you, Klaus. Fantastic. And to our viewers, thank you for watching today. Uh, as we always talk about, please do make sure you not only get vaccinated yourself, but uh, you remember when you talk to your loved ones, when you talk to your colleagues, when you talk to your patients, make sure as much as possible everyone gets their COVID shots. So once again, everyone, thank you for watching, and we will catch up with you again soon on the next episode of ASGE The Advocate. Keep well and stay safe.